Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In his discussion of Anger and Rhetoric, Book 2, Aristotle is going to identify and briefly discuss a number of situations and people that are liable to lead to greater anger. And what is the greater here? So the Greek term is malon, and we could think about this in terms of just the intensity of the anger, but we, we also might think about it in terms of how long it lasts or what kind of retribution or satisfaction the person is going to demand. And there aren't absolute rules about this. These are sort of generalizations that Aristotle himself is noting. And I should point out that the context of the rhetoric is learning about the emotions not for their own sake, but so that you can appeal to them as a rhetorician, as somebody who is going to use these emotions to try to get an audience to, to do something or to not do something, to say something, to not say something, to feel in a certain way and view things a certain way. So this is not an absolutely comprehensive list. Aristotle is not writing a psychology textbook about anger. He's just noting some of the things that we can learn from experience that may be helpful for us to have top of mind. So there are things that can provoke anger to a greater extent. And a lot of these have to do with the kind of person or the kind of actions that they're engaging in or failing to engage in. So the first that he talks about, and here he explicitly says, people get angrier, right? He invokes the malon at the beginning of this passage with those of little account, right? Or of little account and made any logo usin, people who are considered to be not as important. They don't have higher social status. Um, they may be viewed as in certain respects beneath us. And why should this make us angrier? He tells us that when these people slight us, anger at a slight was assumed to be felt at those who ought not to behave in such a, a manner. Tus me pro, pros e contas. And this goes to the definition of anger, where Aristotle said the slighting itself, if it's going to make us angry, has to be unjust, undo, you know, inappropriate. It, it shouldn't be what happens. And so, you know, if somebody is serving us a drink and they're like, you know, hope you swallow it down, you fat slob, you know, maybe that would be an example of what we're talking about here. As a server, they're perceived as being inferior to the customers and they shouldn't be behaving in such a way. Now, if they were at a restaurant where that's the norm, it wouldn't be perceived as wrong, right? It'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, I am a, you know, I am a slob. Let me down this right away. But you know, in a typical situation, that's that's the way it works. And so, people who are inferior, according to you know, our sort of social mores, should not be giving a hard time to people who are at least equal or superior to them in some respect. So we'll get angrier when they have the effrontery to do such a thing, right? Or, well, I can't believe that they talk to me that way. It would be, you know, angering if somebody who is on my same level talked to me that way. I can't believe that this person, you know, the scum of the earth, or just, you know, an inferior person would, would say these sorts of things or would, you know, do these 
sorts of things. So that's one dynamic. Another very interesting one that he notes has to do with friends. And he says that, well, we get angry with friends when they fail to do some things, when they don't speak well, may eu legusin, right? Or treat us well, a uh, poyusin, they don't behave well towards us. Now, why? Because there's an expectation that friends should be friendly to each other, should do good things and speak well of each other. And then Aristotle says we get even more angry when the friends do the opposite. And what is the, the opposite, the enantia in this case? Well, it would be um, not just not speaking well of us, it would be speaking badly of us when our friends run us down behind our backs or even in front of us. You know, think about frenemies who are always rivaling with us about things and, and say little, little sarcastic comments, right? Uh, give us compliments that aren't really compliments or treating us well. The opposite would be treating us poorly, treating us not just as not just friends, uh, but as, as enemies to some degree or as people of no account. Well, we get angrier with our friends. Why? Again, as with the first one, because there's a social expectation there. And we could also say a very basic human psychological expectation that those who we're close to should be treating us well, should give preference to us. So that's an important one. With the others, Aristotle doesn't come out directly and use the term to a greater extent in Greek malon, but I think that we can read that into the context of these passages. And so one group of people that we, we do get angry with and can get angrier with are those who re rejoice or are cheerful. Um, now, I I the Greek terms for this uh, are going to be, uh, here we go, epihairousi, so you know, hairein is to rejoice, uh, rejoicing about something in particular. Um, and then the, the cheerfulness, eu thumumenois, right? It's coming from this word thumos, uh, which is, by the way, is, is sometimes used synonymously with anger, but sometimes designates this larger, scope of orexis or desire within Aristotle that includes anger, but also includes other things. So those who are in good spirits, you could say. Now, we don't get angry at people just for rejoicing or being in good spirits. When do we get angry at them for that? When we are experiencing what in Greek is called atuchia, misfortune, uh, things going badly for us, a failure, a lack of success, you know. So for example, Aristotle doesn't provide us with any, but for example, when we um, lose a job or when a relationship breaks up or when um, our child is injured or when our paper gets sent out or our book set gets sent out and the publisher's like, this is garbage, right? Seeing other people rejoicing or at least in a generally good mood, makes us feel bad. And that feeling bad can translate into anger and even into greater anger. Why aren't you bothered by the fact that these bad things are happening to me? Why are you having a good time? It sort of bespeaks of a lack of care and consideration. So we can, we can get angry with those. Uh, another, he talks about when, um, here we go. Uh, those who don't care if they cause us pain. And, you know, this is a perception matter, right? So what would be some examples of these? Um, those who bring us bad news. They don't care that they're actually causing us pain. Now, a lot of times people bringing us bad news are actually quite upset about the fact that they have to tell us something bad. They'll say, you know, please uh, sit down. You know, is there anything I can do for you? That might not anger, but somebody coming along, a oh, prime example of this in uh, academic life, when you apply for jobs and there's, you know, anywhere from 
200 to 1,000 applicants for an academic position, uh, much more in the, the median of like 300 to 500. And you get that uh, email long after you've applied for the job and it says, oh, we had many qualified candidates. We regret to inform you. You will not be moving on to the next uh, segment, sequence, whatever it is, the next steps for this. Uh, people can get quite angry about that. I can't believe they turned me down, right? Uh, that's bringing bad news. Also, we get angry at those who, as Aristotle says, listen to accounts, a kuen in Greek, who like to hear bad stuff about us, kaka, right? Um, or who witness, who see us uh, doing bad, theomenois, right? Um, and so, um, you know, this phala is, is the, the bad things, ta auton phala. Um, this could be like bad things happening to us. This could be bad things that we have done or that we said or anything like that. It's kept very generic. Um, we can get angry with those who are doing that, and sometimes we can get angrier. Again, notice the common element here, because there's some sort of perceived norms being violated, right? They shouldn't be listening to those things about us. They should be defending us, right? Another one that's very interesting. Now, Aristotle says that anger can arise not only at slighting directed at us as individuals, but also those things or people that we are concerned with or are connected with or identify with or you know, in some way feel like it falls into our purview. So you know, somebody who um, is very interested in darts, if you make fun of darts, maybe they get angry at you, right? Those that we're really concerned with are people who are connected with us and are vulnerable. And Aristotle actually goes a little bit further and says those who it would be shameful or dishonorable for us not to defend. And the Greek word for defending there is very interesting. It's actually um, the word that's used for come to aid, like rush to aid as an ally. He says they're angry with those who slight such persons. It would be disgraceful. That's another good translation of Eichron, not to defend. And who does he give as examples there? There he actually does give examples. Gones, parents. Tecna, children. Gunaikas, uh, a wife or wives. Um, Dependents, archomenos, uh, literally those who are being ruled or determined by one. So the members of one's household, if you happen to have a managerial position in a company, your reports, your employees, the people that you're responsible for. Aristotle says that uh, we are, you know, we have a responsibility and we are also perceiving ourselves to have a responsibility to look out for, to defend these people against the slights that could be done to them by other people. And we're more likely, if we're you know, at least decent people, to get angry about that than we are if somebody makes fun of our love for stamps or checkers or <laughs> songbirds or something like that. Um, another one that's very, very interesting, those who do not show gratitude is how it's typically translated. The Greek is a little bit more complex. Tois uh, hyrin me apodidusin. So people who we've done some sort of benefit to and they are not responding appropriately to us. Apodidusin literally means like give, there's the word giving in there. And a little bit earlier, Aristotle actually talks about um, those who do not return kindnesses, antipoyun, um, with the, the privative may in front of it. So the, the idea is if you're benefiting a person, first, if they can, they should try to benefit you in return. 
if they can't provide similar benefits, they should at least provide some other things, honor, affection, attention, those sorts of matters. And so that is how you actually show gratitude, a sense of the other person having done something for you. And Aristotle says that we get angry with those who don't show gratitude and we might get angrier the more that they show contempt by you know, forgetting us or things like that. Aristotle, by the way, also tells us in this section, although I'm not sure that we can say that it's a greater, you know, being angrier, he tells us that forgetfulness, lethe, is actually a cause of anger. And it can be understood as a sort of contempt, katafronesis, one of the three main modalities of sliding. So forgetting a person's name, forgetting that you've, you know, uh, committed to doing something for them, that can make us angry. He doesn't actually say that that can make us angrier, so that's why I didn't uh, put that here. And then one other that I think is really quite interesting and we can relate to in our own time, particularly those employing irony, right? Those who are being ironic is another way of translating it. And it's coming from the Greek, tois ero neumenois, right? Literally, it's coming from to eron, irony, those who use irony, those who don't just self-deprecate. Oh, who am I to say anything about wisdom? I have no wisdom. You may recognize Socrates there. But those who also use irony with respect to other people, especially with things about which those people are serious or take seriously, the Greek there is um, spudadzontas, right? And uh, this does mean to take seriously, to, to value is another way of thinking about it. So, you know, you play a record of the band that you love that's just got a new album out for somebody and they're like, oh yeah, I guess that's kind of cool if you're into, you know, old hair metal. <laughs> You know, that that must be really awesome to go to listen to them with all the other aged fans and hear them play the same, you know, three chords over and over again. Okay, and then they say, oh, I'm just being ironic. And you're like, damn it, I don't like that when you talk that way about my band, right? Or anything else um, <laughs> coming along. And the famous meme of the guy opening the door while, while the, the kid is playing some sort of game and they're like, are you winning? Are you winning can sometimes be a ironic statement, right? So that can make people angrier as well, particularly as the irony gets heaped on and heaped on and heaped on. You know, once you start being ironic about something that somebody else is serious about, it's kind of hard to dig yourself out of that hole without apologizing, right? Uh, if you just say, I was being ironic, they can say, well, why were you? Why didn't you care about this thing that I take seriously? So all of these are factors that can lead to an intensification of anger on the part of the person who is, in fact, feeling that emotion. Perhaps uh, the anger is provoked directly by these things, or perhaps it's a mixture where they're already angry and they get angrier because these sorts of things happen. And in some cases, it's going to lead to a greater intensity just by itself.